Tonight, Facebook slaps down $19 billion for WhatsApp. There's a new version of Google Maps, the popular dating app with a major security flaw. Not Google Maps, but it will tell you which one it is. And Aereo has to shut down, and we'll tell you where. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 27, for Wednesday, February 19th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. Learn what you want, when you want, with access to over 2,000 high-quality online courses, all for one low monthly price. To try it free for seven days, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash tn2. I'm Sarah Lane, and I think we have some breaking news today. Facebook has announced it's buying a messaging app, WhatsApp, for $12 billion in stock, $4 billion in cash. The agreement also provides for an additional $3 billion in restricted stock units to be granted to WhatsApp founders and employees that will vest over four years. WhatsApp claims over 450 million people are using the service each month. 70% of those are active on any given day, and the service is currently adding more than 1 million new registered users per day. Joining us now to make some sense of these numbers is Clayton Morris, technology correspondent for Fox News Channel, and actually the creator of Read Quick for iOS that I know and love. Hello, Clayton. Hi. Hey, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, let's talk about this. Why in the world would Facebook, Facebook want WhatsApp when Facebook already has Facebook Messenger? Well, because Facebook Messenger is really only popular in the United States and WhatsApp dominates around the rest of the world. is super popular in Brazil, parts of Latin America that Facebook is really trying to get a foothold in right now. And you have to think about the number one thing that people do with their smartphone is not take pictures, it's not surf the web, it's messaging. And Facebook has really fall, fallen behind in a lot of these a lot of these spots and you mentioned just that three billion dollars in uh, stock options mm -hmm. for those for, for those employees that's really just like the cherry on top but that's exactly the same amount that they tried to buy snapchat for three billion dollars so they were not going to screw this up i mean they were going to put as much money as they could possibly get behind the largest messaging service in the world so that they dominate that space, it seems. It's interesting, uh, certainly from the U.S., there are a lot of people saying, why is WhatsApp so popular? What's so special about it? Why do you think it gains such a foothold in other markets? It's hard to say, but I think because there isn't the foothold of Facebook in those other spots, you have all of these other messaging services that popped up in China, other parts of Asia. I think WeChat is really popular in China. So some of these other free messaging services that don't rely on a cellular plan to actually enable kids to jump on one of these devices, even if it's a cell phone that doesn't have a cell plan or an, I, uh, an iPod Touch, they're able to message with their friends and they don't have to, parents don't have to actually pay for a cellular plan. I think that's why this thing has become so popular. You know, both companies say, both Facebook and WhatsApp say that the company will continue to exist independently and, right. and work autonomously. That's what they said about Instagram too, when Facebook bought Instagram back in 2012. And it wasn't long before we started to see how Facebook uh, uh, ads would start to be used within Instagram. Facebook's down about 5% in after hours trading. Do you think people are worried about how WhatsApp might change for the worse? I don't know. I, mean, I think if it gets sullied, if kid, I mean, is a is a 13 year old girl going to suddenly start to notice if a little if a few ads start popping up in her WhatsApp feed? Will she really mind it? I'm not entirely sure. They play Candy Crush, right? Aren't those filled with uh, stinking ads all over yeah, the place? It works really well for that company. Um, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I think about I think about Instagram. Are you? Do you really mind Instagram having a little bit of? Facebook chicanery on top of it. I haven't noticed much right. in my Instagram feed. And to me, it's kind of kept the anonymity of uh, of Instagram intact. You know, Kevin Systrom, we asked that question at an event in New York City not too long ago. How much of a push is Facebook giving you? And he he answered it, I think, pretty candidly. And he, 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 did, he said, there's not that much of a push. We're able to do these things. And I don't know if you want to believe them or not. But it seems to me that they've kept the integrity of Instagram right now. And they're even cagey. I think Zuckerberg on the last phone call for their earnings said that they're, they're really trying to keep Instagram insular. They're trying to keep it, you know, contained and that, that they think that that's really good for Instagram. So I don't know that WhatsApp is going to suddenly become all messed up with Facebook. 
You know, Mark Zuckerberg, speaking of Zuck, said on a call today explaining the, the sale that ads aren't the best way in his mind to monetize messaging services and that they've learned a lot from the purchase of Instagram. Instagram seems like a paltry sum at $1 billion compared to this $19 billion, uh, a, a huge sum yeah. for WhatsApp. What do you think they've learned and what are they going to do differently? Well, I think with Instagram, it's interesting because... I mean, other than a few ads from certain companies coming into the feed, and if they're doing it smart, right, if National Geographic puts in a really nice photograph of a bird, we're not going to mind that. It's when the feed gets sullied with weird ads that are not integral to the process of being on Instagram that I think you're going to have the problem. The problem, though, for Instagram is they can't really figure out yet how to monetize it. And you have all of these high-end brands really using Instagram now. I don't know if you saw that. I don't know, it was a few months ago that Chanel had mm -hmm. 5 million people using a hashtag that they created. 5 yeah. million people looked at the photos on their Instagram feed. Think about that. And I like, mean, if you think yeah. of like broadcast television, I think like Anderson Cooper show gets like four, you know, 400, maybe 500,000 viewers on a night. 5 million people looked at Chanel's photo hashtag on Instagram, and yet they haven't figured out how to monetize it. And you have advertisers who are actually putting money in their accounts departments for people who are overseeing their Instagram accounts. So this is a really important part of a social media component for companies, but they can't figure out how to make money off of it. So I don't know how they're going to make money off of WhatsApp. Well, they certainly bought themselves a lot of users worldwide. That's yeah. for sure. Well, Clayton Morris, thank you so much for being with us and making a little more sense of uh, our breaking news, Facebook buying WhatsApp. Where can people find more of your work online and elsewhere? Uh, you can always find me on Twitter at Clayton Morris. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Ask me any questions and I always answer them. Awesome. All right, Clayton Morris. Thanks for being <laughs> with us. Come back soon. Thanks, Sarah. You bet. Thanks, guys. Coming up, a new version of Google Maps, a win for the broadcasters against Aereo in court, and the danger of dating apps, at least one of them. But first, this episode of Tech News Today is brought to you by lynda.com. With lynda.com's easy-to-follow video tutorials, you can learn at your own pace from industry experts. With a subscription, you get unlimited access to thousands of online video courses. They cover thousands of technical skills, creative techniques, business strategies. If you want to improve your photography skills or master new software, work on your next big web design at lynda.com, you can find top quality videos on hundreds of subjects just like that. You can watch those from your computer, your tablet, your mobile device. Instructors are all accomplished professionals. They're experts. They're passionate about their courses. And you can follow each course from start to finish, or you can jump on in and find a quick answer. It's $25 a month for access to the entire lynda.com course library, or for $37.50 a month, you can subscribe to the premium plan, which also includes exercise files. You can try lynda.com right now with a free seven-day trial. Go to lynda.com slash TN2 and access the entire library. Over 2,000 courses, completely free for seven days. lynda.com slash TN2. Well, Google's got a lot of news of its own today. After showing off a new version of Google Maps at its I.O. developer conference last year, the company now has announced today it's rolling out the new Google Maps layout to all users as the default option. Speaking of I.O., this year's conference will be held from June 25th through June 26th at the Moscone Center in San Francisco. And will we rely on a lottery system this year to distribute tickets after they sold out in under an hour last year. Got to keep it a little bit more fair. Finally, the company's also identified nine metro areas around the U.S. as potential Google Fiber cities. And they'll conduct research in each area to scope out factors like topography, housing density, and the condition of local infrastructure. Cities like Portland, Nashville, San Antonio, and five cities in Silicon Valley are among those under consideration. Well, Aereo, the startup that sends broadcast television signals to consumers via the internet, will have to shut down its operations in Utah and Colorado due to a ruling by the U.S. 10th Circuit District Court in Utah, which ends a streak of legal victories against the broadcasting industry. 
In fact, this is the first time a court has not ruled in favor of Aereo. The ruling grants a request for a preliminary injunction against Aereo that was sought by these major broadcast networks. About two months from now, the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear arguments from those networks that Aereo should be shut down everywhere because it illegally steals their copyright. The companies will also seek to overturn an earlier decision by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit in New York, which said that Aereo's transmissions and recordings are, quote, not public performances of copyrighted material. Did you get all that? Information security firm Include Security is claiming that the dating app Tinder... I've used it, had a major security flaw that let people see another person's exact location for much of 2013. The vulnerability reportedly allowed a Tinder user to find another user's location as long as they had the app running. But if the app wasn't running, they could still find that user's last location. Using an algorithm called trilateration, include security was able to get those exact latitude longitude coordinates for any user. Although the researchers say anybody can do the same thing just using Tinder's API. After telling Tinder about the hole, it sat exposed for two months before being patched right before January 1st of this year. And finally, an electronic cigarette isn't cool. You know what's cool? E-cigs with Bluetooth. E-cigarette Super Smoker has added Bluetooth capabilities to its latest model. Yes, I am being serious. Here's the deal. There's a set of three buttons on the device that lets you place and answer calls from the actual e-cigarette, plus a built-in mic and a speaker that lets you talk during your non-smoke breaks, if that's what they're calling them now. The Bluetooth connection also means that the super smoker can double as a wireless speaker. Oh, and it's $110. Well, that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. To subscribe to the show, go to twit.tv slash TN2. You can also write us some feedback, TN2 at twit.tv. Let us know how we're doing. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Until then, I am Sarah Lane, and thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.